Welcome to ChartingWealth.com. This is the market review for Wednesday, the 22nd of April, 2015. This is IYY, the Total Market Index. This is where we start. It is an ETF and it reflects what's going on in the whole market. When you see green candles, that means that the days, that these two days have gone up, red candles going down. Check out what we have happening in the market right now. These were starting back on the 8th of the month, then the 10th, the 14th, the 16th. When you see big breaks, of course, that means a weekend. And then we started the week on Monday and then the Tuesday time slot. And what we see happening is there was a huge drop in the market on Friday. Then on Monday, we saw a recovery in the market as it started pushing itself up. And what we see happening today, again, over the last couple of days, and again, we are using a specific type of candle. So overall, the market was down 0.07%, but we're looking at it on a two-day play here. And we've tried to draw a trend line, not the best trend lines, particularly when you have a down candle there, but we're trying to find a trend. We can see that the MACD moved over going up. Now, don't forget, if you go to our good friends over at the Stock Market Almanac, which is a publication, buy, read it, follow it every day. It is great. Uh, Mr. Hirsch puts that out, and you should read it. They will tell you that April, over the last 21 years or so, has been the best performing month for the S&P. Now, it's also been a good performing month, one of the top four, if I recall correctly, for the NASDAQ. And what we're looking at here is the total market. We're going to get to the S&P in just a minute. But the market is trying its best to go up. This is the these light green lines that you see back here are the derivative oscillator and it is trying its best to push up. The blue and the red line you see right here are the MACD. That means moving average convergence divergence. It's trying its best to go up. You can see where it is converging. It diverges when it moves away. They move away from each other. When they converge, they're getting ready to switch over. When you see the red on top, it means that, of course, you've got a down move. When the blue switches over on top, it's an up move. And again, the MACD is mine, and, and probably most traders would tell you that it is one of the best indicators to show you which way the market, which way the stock, the equity, the commodity, whatever it is you're charting is going. Now, we can see that it is converging a little bit. We can see that derivative oscillators pretty much holding steady. The market is trying to move up despite other things that are going on. We're switching over now to the four-hour chart, and that is a very slow-loading chart. Sorry about that. But we can see what it's done over the last day. This is what it did on Tuesday the 21st. You can see the derivative oscillator is backing off. It was in a down move. Now, again, we're looking at a smaller chart, which reflects different things. It's like a smaller wave, and the smaller wave was going down even though the bigger wave is still in an uptrend. Here is the two-day trend line that we drew, and you can see that it's not crossed through it. We redrew the trend line. Again, it's a little off because we had a red candle, which is not something we typically like to draw trend lines through. We're just trying to get a feel for something. But you can tell it didn't cross over today going up on the four-hour chart. Uh, you can see the way the market opened this morning and how it closed lower. Like we said, overall, the market was down 0.07% today. Uh, that is here when we're recording this for the market on Wednesday, but this is the day ending on Tuesday. So what's really going on? Well, the two-day chart is going up. The uh, four-hour chart is still down, although it is trying to slack off, but again, nothing super positive. You can tell that the market's in a bit of a struggle on where it's going, what it's doing. Now, let's broaden back out to the two-day chart. Again, we are still, of course, in an up move. This is on the total market. Now, let's go to the SPY, the Standard & Poor 500. I made reference to a minute ago how this is the best month that toward the end of the month for 
the S&P according to the stock, mark, stock Traders Almanac. And what we see here is again an attempt to draw a trend line. You can see again looks very similar. Derivative oscillators actually moving out a little bit. Markets trying to do something just doesn't look like it can quite break through the 30 and the 34 moving linear regression lines. We use those as sort of uh, ceilings uh, or floors to see if it can punch through or stay above. It's trying but it is mightily struggling. Now let's back off and check out the four hour chart and see what we see here. And of course, it is showing about the same thing we saw in the total market. Trying to back off a little bit, the derivative oscillators losing some of its down moves, but it looks actually like just we saw in the IYY, the total market, that it's actually diverging a little bit which could mean that the down moves heating up some, and particularly the way it ended the day. So again, the market's struggling to find its legs. It is trying to move up, but nothing's really pushing that up strong. But we shall see. You can see where it bounced off. The moving linear regression lines is what it looks like on the four-hour chart. Now again, that's a smaller chart. You know, you don't necessarily go by the small chart. One thing we do like to do, though, if you look overall over the last few months, and again, the market's getting ready to change because we're going into the summertime trading zone, which is typically a very poor charting zone. Why? The big money goes out of the market. Have you ever heard that? If you haven't heard it, if you pay attention to the market much, particularly in May, you'll hear sell in May and go away. A lot of the big money leaves the market. People go on vacation. They take their money out. And they don't, we don't have the kind of volume that you're used to seeing. But look back during the good fat times. When we say fat times, we don't mean the market's necessarily moving up, but the moves are strong. Look how good the four-hour chart was. It crossed over going down. And look at this nice, clean down move. It crossed over going up. Nice, clean up move. It crossed back over going down. And look at that move. And then it sort of monkeyed around, but it never crossed back, so you never switched. And then what happened when it crossed over again? Nice, clean move up. If it holds, then on the four-hour chart, it will bounce back over. But that's yet to be seen, particularly at the end. And with the kind of up movement you have pushing the market, particularly S&P, in April. So let's continue to watch that. Now, we're going to branch back out to the two-day chart. We are going to, and again, sorry these charts are loading so slow. We're going to actually go to the queues. And what we're seeing, of course, in the queues as we look at the two-day chart, we see, uh, again, an effort to draw a trend line, not the best of trend lines. We like them to connect three candles all together with no candle different than the main color. So we would like three greens going up, three reds going down. We see the crossover uh, in the up movement. We saw some nice up movement today, 0.43% up movement. And you can tell when this crossed over, we talked about it. Uh, we saw the derivative oscillator move over just before we saw the Q's move over. And again, this is the NASDAQ 100. And we can see a real push up. Now again, look at the, you know, it sort of stuck its head right there on the 34 period moving linear regression line, uh, linear regression line. So let's continue to watch that. Now let's back off a little bit and look at the four hour or the half day chart and see what we see. When did the strong movements take place on that? And again, these charts are loading awfully slow for us. Apologize for that. Hopefully we're going to, there we go. Uh, we're we're going to see something here. So what we see is there's, of course, our trend line. Here is the movement that we saw early in the day, strong, late in the day, uh, weakening off. But you see how this much movement over these three candles was able to give the derivative oscillator enough of a push that it continued to move up. And of course, you saw the cross going up on the four hours. So the movement going up on the Qs, on the NASDAQ, much stronger than the IYY, the total market, or the S&P. And so what we'll continue to do is watch this. Of course, the four-hour chart's telling us that. And as we saw on the two-day chart, it just recently switched over going up. So we do see some uh, stronger up moves on the Qs than, of course, on the S&P and the total market. Now, the last thing that we want to do is switch over 
and look at the two-day chart on gold. Now, again, we've been watching gold. It is, is this just not, it just keeps on. Uh, it has continued to sit here since back on the 6th of the month. Look at this. We have continued to have gold stay in this crazy range where it stayed right about around 115 or so, never going above or below this big green candle all this time. Now, what is gold going to do? Your guess is as good as mine. We can see the derivative oscillators moving off on the two-day chart, and we can see that the MACD is pretty much, well, it looks like it's converging a little, so it looks like it's losing steam. As we said yesterday, it does appear that gold is losing its steam the longer it stays in this range. It doesn't seem to have any energy to push itself up, but at the same time, it doesn't have any energy to shove itself down either. So we'll continue to watch gold, see if the four-hour chart tells us much of anything more. Well, you can see sort of toward the end of the day, look at this. It's hit its head here, here, here. Uh, again, not going above the 30 and the 34 period moving linear regression line. Isn't that interesting? And if you see, you can see the derivative oscillators lost some energy trying to gain it back. Looks like the four-hour chart's trying to move up. But again, you know, this is the 50 period moving average. And again, on a four-hour chart, that's a half day. So half of 50 is 25. It's 25 day uh, moving average. And you know, the, the, it's, the moving linear regression lines, or I'm sorry, the MACD is just having trouble getting above that. We shall continue to watch and just see what happens. But if you look at the big chart, of course, gold just appears to not have enough energy to move up. So we'll continue to watch it. That's what the markets did on Tuesday as you get ready for Wednesday. Again, continue to watch the NASDAQ in its current up move and have some concerns about where the total market and the S&P is going. Looks like, you know, most months in April over the last 21 years, it's been strong up moves toward the end of the month, and the market appears to be trying to do that. Still some indecision out there. Thanks for joining us. Great trading.